Hello everyone, Stazima here, and it is E3 week, a very exciting time, especially for Halo. We have a ton of new footage coming out, and today I'm going to break down the multiplayer aspect of it for you. I'm going to do a campaign in Spartan Ops 1 separately because there's just so much to talk about. If you haven't seen one of the three multiplayer footage videos, check the description below. They will all three be in there. First, we'll talk about the B-roll multiplayer footage. They break it down pretty easily into War Games 1 through 5, and I'm going to talk about 1, 3, 4, and 5. So let's get started with number 1. Watching this really reveals the scoring system. Everyone gets 10 points per kills, and you see the double and ki triple kills do not count towards the person's score. The person had 450 coming in, and he has 480 going out after getting 3 kills. Notice on the scoreboard in the bottom right, you can see the person's call sign there. And also, look over to the left, you can see the armor ability orb. I think that this looks like camo to me. That looks like kind of a camo with the eye, with the X inside of it. Also, you see the blue new metal style. I actually kind of like it. It goes with the new HUD and new look of Halo, so I do like the new metals, actually. You gotta give some creative freedom and appreciate the new stuff that 343 is trying to bring in. Speaking of medals, you also see the new headshot medal here with the skull inside of it. It looks pretty cool. Moving on to War Games number 3, you see a lot in this one. The first thing I notice is the ordnance indicator and the orb slash sphere in the left. Now the ordnance indicator is an arrow, white arrow, pointing to a sniper rifle in the air near your air by. So, that means that when a person summons a rifle or some kind of new powerful weapon it alerts everyone on the map to its presence so people actually know where you are and they know where to come and get you if they want to try and steal your power weapon look over to the armor ability sphere again and you'll see i think this is the hologram a spartan behind the spartan that kind of looks like a hologram ish kind of thing to me it might be sprint i'm not sure the other guys have to check out that one the next interesting thing i see is the radar you see the X of the teammate who just died now on the radar, so that's a new thing. And also, the Warthog is no longer just a big dot. It actually shows the front rotation of the Warthog, and it shows the full thing on the radar to give you a better idea of what the Warthog is doing and what it's looking at. An interesting thing I see in this game type is as the Warthog drives by, there is an arrow pointing specifically to the passenger seat. I'm not quite sure what is that for. It might be specific to a certain game type. I'm not exactly sure why 343 would point out the passenger seat to an opposing player. And as the Warthog blows up, you see the grenade indicator in front of you. So now grenades are going to be, you're going to know when the grenade is about to go off towards you and you're going to know where it is. That's a new thing to Halo and that's pretty interesting that they're putting that in there. You also get a glimpse of the assist medal and the grenade damage. The grenades actually seem to do a really heavy amount of damage to the Warthog in this clip. In War Games number 4, we see the scatter shot, the new Forerunner weapon. To me, it seems really powerful and cool how it incinerates enemies, but it also seems very unwieldy with a lot of recoil. So it seems powerful but hard to control, a good trade-off. We also see the armor ability sphere to the left. This looks like the hard light shield armor ability, which we will get to in a second here. Last thing I want to point out on this clip is in the bottom right, you see the game type and the back button. That to me means that you're going to be able to press back at any time and switch the loadout whenever you want for your next respawn. In this next clip we see what I believe is called the light rifle. It is very similar to the plasma repeater in Halo Reach in that you can see the overheating of the gun and also it gets less accurate the longer you have your finger on the trigger. We also see the hard light and DMR in action. The hard light shield doesn't look that overpowered because it only protects you from the front. The guy easily gets killed from behind so I think it does balance out and that it will have its uses because you cannot fire a gun while you're holding the hard light shield. Interestingly enough, we see the DMR fire twice and you can clearly see Bloom on the DMR. It does not look as severe as the Bloom in Halo Reach. It doesn't really look that bad at all, so I'm not sure that that's something to worry about. In the Halo 4 Infinity multiplayer trailer, we're going to be moving on to that now. It's basically an overview of the Spartan Ops and War Games mode. War Games is also another name for matchmaking. It's the new name for matchmaking, rather. The main thing we see in this gameplay is a lot of menus. This right here is a player coming out of the Spartan Ops mode, and you can see that the Reach ranking system is back. You can see the Major, the amount of XP he has, it's now called XP and not Credits. 
but the main thing is that you will need to gain a certain amount of experience to level up. Now this does not mean that there is no kind of skill ranking system, but it just means that there will be a reach style ranking system implemented in Halo 4. And finally we see a glimpse of the customizable editable loadouts. You see here you have the primary, secondary, grenade, armor ability, and interestingly enough there's an armor mod ability so that will give you a new special ability to purchase and add on to there. Also on the bottom here you'll see the current balance with your Spartan points next to that. Those are presumably gotten from leveling up your character. I'm really interested in the future to see which weapons you can put as your primary secondary. Also in the bottom left, I'm not sure if this is correct, but you see the call sign, it is 8 letters long. I'm not sure that the 343i on the end there is just a special thing for 343 employees, or the call sign might actually be 8 letters long, or maybe just your regular call sign and then a clan tag on top of that. And finally, you'll see on the bottom of the menu here, Party. And that's presumably connected to all your friends, similar to the Halo Reach tiles on the, on the right side when you log in. That'll easily connect you to all your friends and all that stuff, all the people playing Halo 4. Now we'll move into the Halo 4 War Games trailer. It's a lot of good action and it showcases a lot of different maps. Frank O'Connor has actually confirmed that Halo 4 will ship with 10 Halo 4 multiplayer maps. That does not include Forge maps that they will be making. The first thing we see here is the ghost, a little bit of vehicle action for you, and it shows the boost percentage in the top left corner now, that's a new feature. In this free for all gameplay we see some kind of speed boost slash charging armor ability. It doesn't look like sprint, it looks like a very intense leveled sprint to me. So maybe there's a special armor ability that gives you a very very fast short burst of speed. Now throughout this gameplay you'll see a lot of crazy assassinations like this one and a new feature is that the assassination is now announced by the announcer. But I want to draw your eyes to the sword in the top right. It says 101% charge after he just killed a guy. Now this could mean that it doesn't take off char charge when assassinating some people and it could also mean that somehow you overcharge your sword for some reason. I'm not quite sure what that's all about. We'll have to wait and see. Here we see the landmine gun, not to be confused with the rocket pistol. It looks like a person just shoots a landmine down and then waits for an enemy to step over it. It explodes and it kills him. It doesn't look like he manually activated it to me at least. We have a short, like, two-second clip, clip here of a guy beating someone down regularly, a uh, regular assassination, the metal that we've seen and loved since Halo 3. So, it looks like you can just beat down someone from behind without doing a crazy, flashy assassination. As this guy kills the person on the ghost, we see a whole host of new metals. They're fancy and ornate and golden. They look to me like an ordnance symbol, a skull, and then a snowflake maybe? I'm not quite sure what that is. Possibly sprees or special commendations that you get per game. Up next is a big thing that we've been waiting to see for a while, the Ordnance Delivery System. As we pause here, you can see the Scattershot, the Needler, and a Shield power-up, it looks like to me. And the person instantly summons it down to the ground, which will, again, alert everyone on the map to what the armor ability slash ordnance is. And lastly, we see the Rocket Pistol. It looks like a successor to the Grenade Launcher and a replacement. It looks actually a little more powerful to me, at least. And... That's all I got for this analysis, guys. So much to talk about. So much exciting Halo 4 to talk about. More coming later this week, as usual. See you guys around. Finally, I want to give a special shout-out to Paul B., who's at E3 this week, actually playing Halo 4. I'm jealous. Congratulations, Paul. Stazima, out. Have a good day.